Hi guys, I've reached an important milestone. I'm now 12 weeks pregnant and the roller coaster ride continues. The nausea is still a big issue, as is the ongoing heartburn, but I'm managing to keep my hives under control by keeping my body cool, as heat makes them worse. One thing that was a letdown this week was I had my nip test at 10 weeks and two days pregnant, and the result came back on Wednesday as unable to process due to insufficient fetal cells. For those of you who have also experienced this, I'm going to bring my husband into this conversation because he's a specialist obstetrician and knows more about this than me. So what can contribute to this non-result? There are a number of factors that can contribute to your chances of not having enough fetal cells on testing. Yeah. The most common one is doing the test a little bit too early. Mm -hmm. So even though you can do the test from 10 weeks onwards, it does increase the chances of not having enough cells the earlier you do it. And some obstetricians actually recommend not doing the test under 11 weeks due to this. Oh, right. Another major factor is maternal obesity with the increased maternal fat cells watering down the uh, fetal cells and therefore the uh, concentration of fetal cells isn't enough for analysis. Other factors uh, in IVF pregnancy, especially if it's a fresh embryo, increase the chances of there not being enough fetal cells. Mm -hmm. And being on clexane really increases the risk uh, for reasons that we don't know. Uh, in addition, being an older mum also does contribute. Oh, so I do tick a lot of those um, factors. <laughs> older mum, um, IVF pregnancy, fresh transfer, I am on clexane. So that should make us feel a little bit less anxious because it looks like we were heading down the track of, oh, and, and the collection was very early too. So um, yeah, we did get that result of not enough fetal cells, but also this result is associated with a slightly higher risk of a few things. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yes, not having enough uh, fetal cells on testing is associated with a few potential complications. Mm -hmm. um, some chromosomal anomalies such as trisomy 13 and trisomy 18, Patel's and Edwards syndrome, mm -hmm. are more likely if you haven't had enough fetal cells on testing. Ironically, you're actually less likely to have a fetus with Down syndrome, trisomy 21, if, if that occurs though. Yeah. Um, other factors is that if you don't have enough cells on testing, even though if the fetus is chromosomally normal, you are at an increased risk of intrauterine growth restriction later on in the pregnancy, premature delivery and preeclampsia. Oh, so the worry never goes away with pregnancy. So for other people that are in this boat that we're in right now, where we didn't get enough uh, fetal cells on our first collection, what's the takeaway message? What do we do now? The main thing is don't panic. <laughs> Just have the test done again a few days later. Most of the time, everything will be fine. So I've had the retest done now. Um, so hopefully that um, with this recollection, we'll have enough fetal cells for to give us a result. In the meantime, one of my husband's colleagues at Gold Coast University Hospital has loaned us his portable ultrasound machine till our baby is born. So we can take a quick peek of Bubby every now and then for reassurance. So we're going to do that now. Thank you so much to Dr. Sean Holland for loaning us this machine because yes, it is so reassuring to see the baby moving and to be able to do this. <laughs> Can you see the baby love on the screen? Yeah. 